Good morning. How's everyone doing? My name is Clara Vondrich. I'm with Divest Invest. I'm here to tell you about how your students sparked a movement that is changing the world. In talking to folks yesterday, there's been some, it's clear to me that divestment remains somewhat polarizing, but I just ask that you keep an open mind. With their tens of trillions in assets, institutional investors, including those in this room, literally have the power to make or break the future. Over 50 years ago, Martin Luther King Jr. spoke about the fierce urgency of now. That simple phrase captures the essence of the climate crisis that we grapple with today. The IPCC says we have a decade left before we lock in irreversible chaos. If any of you still doubt the urgency, please read the report from Davos this year, where the global financial elite said that it is with respect to all risks that with climate and the environment that we are most clearly sleepwalking, sleepwalking into catastrophe. Yet your students have been ringing an alarm bell for 20 years now, an alarm bell called fossil fuel divestment. The message is simple. If you own fossil fuels, you own climate change. And the message is hitting home. Over 1,000 institutional investors with assets of more than $8 trillion have now committed to divest. From faith groups to foundations, to sovereign wealth funds and global insurance giants, investors around the world are saying, no, climate change will not happen on my dime. And this goes way beyond mere symbolism. Goldman Sachs has said that the divestment movement was a key driver of the coal sector's 60% derating over the past five years. Global oil companies like Shell now count divestment as a material threat to their business with the potential to impact access to capital and returns. What started on US college campuses is now a global phenomenon that is hitting the industry where it hurts. This is the power of students responding to the fierce urgency of now. The moral clarity of students has been supported by market forces. The financial industry is under unprecedented strain, financial, legal, and reputational. For the past six years, fossil fuel stocks have been uh, speculative and volatile, one of the worst performing sectors of the S&P. And in 2018, they finished dead last. This means that investors are losing money now in just one example, the New York State Pension Fund left $22 billion on the table for refusing to divest a decade ago. That's almost $19,000 per pensioner. Today, the onus is really on fiduciaries to explain why they don't divest. This is the power of markets responding to the fierce urgency of now. But it's not enough to divest from the problem. We have to invest intentionally in the solutions that build a just transition and a fair future for all of us. Heeding this call, the world's financial heartbeats, New York City and London, have pledged not just to divest, but to invest in climate solutions that build local jobs and community resilience. The foundations of Divest Invest Philanthropy have made similar pledges, prioritizing community-based ownership of renewables and clean energy access for the developing world. This is the power of investors responding to the fierce urgency of now. It should come as no surprise that some of the earliest divestment campaigners and leaders are now um, movement leaders of the Sunrise Project, which is sweeping the Congress and the country. It was in res response to these students and their uncompromising vision that Senator Markey and Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez just introduced the first federal legislation on a Green New Deal. This is the power of our elected officials responding to the fierce urgency of now. When I worked on President Obama's commission on the BP oil spill in 2010, I urged the commissioners to use it as a teachable moment to start transitioning our economy away from fossil fuels. The country isn't ready, they said. But that was then, and this is now. We are ready.